most annoying songs, white and brust nerdy. I told myself I wasn't going to do that. Come on, Kelly. Anyways. Okay, so last time you learned about substitution, and this time we're going to learn about a different way to solve linear systems algebraically. It's called elimination. So, what are the steps to elimination? Here are the steps involved in solving systems with elimination. First, you have to make sure that all the variables are lined up. That means the x is over the x, the y is over the y, the equal signs over the equal sign. That is very important. That's the first step. Once you do that, you decide which coefficients you want to cancel out. Uh, to cancel out, they have to be opposites. So opposites are like negative 2 and positive 2, negative 5 and positive 5, negative x and positive x. That's what you're looking for, negative 1, positive 1. Those are opposites, and that's what's going to help us eliminate here. Uh, we then add the two equations, and you'll see that a new equation is formed. You solve that. It'll be very simple. And then you take that and sub it back into the other equation to get the other variable, just like in substitution, and you write your solution as a coordinate point. That's a lot of information. It's probably easiest just to check it out with an example. So here's the first example. Solve the linear system using uh, elimination. We have... 3x, 5, 3x is over 5x. What I'm doing here, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. I'm looking at the first step. Do you have x over x and y over y? We're lining everything up. So the x is over the x. The y is over the y. The equal sign is over the equal sign. And the constant is over the constant. It has to be lined up like that or you cannot do elimination. Next step, um, find out what you're going to cancel out. So do these cancel? No. Do these cancel? Well, actually, yes, they do. You got a negative 4 and a positive 4. They cancel out, so let's cancel the y's. All right, so step three, you add the two equations. We're going to draw a line here. 3x plus 5x. Did you know you could do this? We're just going to add the two equations right up. So 3x and 5x is 8x. Ta-da. Uh, what's a negative 4y and positive 4y? Guess what? They cancel. They go away. 10 plus 6 is 16. And you're looking at going, oh, my God, this is it. 8x equals 16, divide by 8, we get x equals 2. You're all done with that part. Now we have to do the next part, which you remember, you pick either equation. I'll just pick the bottom equation because it doesn't have any negatives in it. But either equation will work. I'm going to rewrite it. 5x plus 4y equals 6. Now what? Just like substitution, you found that x equals 2. We're going to plug it into the x right there. So 5 times 2... And then the rest of the equation as you're writing it. And again, you can pick either one of these. doesn't matter which one. It'll work in both. I picked the bottom one because it doesn't have any negatives. But again, it doesn't matter. So we're going to work through this equation. Subtracting 10 from each side, we're going to get 4y equals negative 4. And if you divide both sides by 4, you'll get y equals negative 1. So x is positive 2. Remember, that always goes first. y is negative 1. Guess what? We just did our first elimination problem. It's that simple. If you want, you can plug these points in and check it out. Is a 3 times 2 minus 4 times negative 1 equal to 10? Well, let's see here. Let's check it out. So 3 times 2 is 6 minus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Is that equal to 10? Yes, it is. It works in that one. You have to check both equations. You can't just check one. So let's try this one. 5 times 2 is 10 plus is 4 times negative 1. That's a negative 4. Is that equal to 6? Yes, it is. So guess what? That's our little check. It works. We're all so happy. Let's try the next couple. Uh, should we do a little more white and nerdy? We do that. that guy dancing looked a little bit like Mr. Brust. All right, so looking at the second example. First thing, make sure everything's lined up. X is over X's, Y is over Y's, and the equal sign over the equal sign. So that's very important, and it's all done for us. Next, figure out which variable we're going to cancel. So do we want to cancel the X's or do we want to cancel the Y's? The last time we canceled the Y's, and if you notice, this time they don't cancel. That's a negative 1 and a negative 3. They don't cancel, but the X's do. You get 2X and a negative 2X. They will cancel out. So I'm going to add the equations and the x's will cancel out. We get nothing there, 0. And a negative 1 and a negative 3 is a negative 4. So we get negative 4y equals 12 and negative 12. Guess what? They cancel too, but that's a coincidence. Okay, we don't care if that happens. We care that the x's cancel. That one just is like an added bonus. We'll put it like that. 
We now divide each side by negative 4, and we get y equals 0. Hey, how easy was that? That was super easy. Now we have to solve for the other variables. So pick an equation, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm going to pick this one, 2x minus y equals 12. That's the first equation. It doesn't matter which one you pick. But we do know now that y equals 0. So 2x minus 0. We're going to put that 0 right in for y equals 12. 2x is going to equal 12 or x equals 6. So guess what? What's our point? Is it zeros? No, it's 6, 0 because remember the x always goes first and the y always goes second. That was amazing. Let's try the next problem, number 3. Let's clear that out. We have x over the x. The y is over the y and the 4 is over the negative 10. So do you see anything that cancels out? And you might be tempted to say, hey, look at those y's. They, well, they're the same. Do they can't? They don't cancel out. Do they cancel out? They don't cancel out. Remember, 2 plus 2 is 4. That's 1 plus negative. That won't cancel either. Guess what? We're going to have to get a little tricky here. So to make these cancel, watch what I'm going to do. Here's a little secret. I'm going to take this equation. Are you watching? You watching? Watch this. Multiply by negative 1. That's my math of magic. Check that out. What's going to happen if I do that? Let's see. Negative 1 times negative 6. I get a 6x. Negative 1 times 2y. I get a minus 2y. Oh, I think you're starting to see what's going on. That'll equal positive 10. Please make sure you multiply all three terms. you got to go all the way through. And now look, the first equation, the first equation is a positive 2y. I'm just rewriting it. I didn't do anything. Uh, the second equation we changed. So now look, the y's will now cancel. Isn't that beautiful? That is remarkable. Now we can do elimination. 6x plus 1x is 7x. And the y's cancel. That's why we did that. And we get equals 14. Now look, that's easy. This is easy. It's not su Substitution was hard. I know. I, I feel your pain. But this one's easy. Kids always love getting to elimination because it's so simple. Now, uh, we get x equals 2. Go back to one of the original equations. I'll pick the first one. The first one looks a little bit easier than the second one. But again, I've stressed it does not matter. x plus 2y equals 4. And we know that x equals 2. So we're going to plug that right here. All right, so that's 2 because we just figured that out. So 2 plus 2y equals 4. We subtract 2 from each side. Draw the line. Cancel out. 2y equals 2. We're going to get y equals 1. So the answer for this one, x first, 2y second, 1. How about that? That is fun stuff. Now I'm going to take you back. Why did we multiply by negative 1? Because these didn't cancel. So if they don't cancel, you can get creative and you can try to multiply one of the equations. You'll see that sometimes you multiply them both uh, so that you can get things that cancel. Let's do some more white and nerdy. Okay, we're back. I'm loving that song. It's going to be a top 10 hit. Okay, so we're going to look at number four. We have uh, the x's. They're all lined up. The y's, they're all lined up. And the equal signs are lined up. So we're ready to do elimination, except uh, nothing's canceling out. So we're going to have to get a little creative here. Um, you have to use your imagination, and you have to figure out how can I get these to cancel. What can I do? And we just multiplied by a negative 1. What can we multiply here? Like, what's the easiest to get canceled? I could cancel the y's if I turn them both into 6's, a 6 and a negative 6. Or, uh, it's probably easier to cancel out the x's. Let's try this. If I multiply the second equation by negative 2, what will that do? What's the benefit in that? Let's see what we get. Negative 4x plus 4y equals 0. you got to make sure you multiply everything through that equation. Uh, I'm going to rewrite the first equation. It's always good to rewrite it right underneath so you don't make a mistake. All right, so then what? Can you see that the x's cancel now? So they're going to cancel out. We're going to get positive y equals 8. We're all done. I mean, seriously, how much easier than substitution is that? You can't get much easier than that. Now we got to play eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger, but okay, I'm going to pick the first one. So 4x. There's no reason why I picked the first one. I just, that's the one you pick. All right, so 4x minus 3 times 8. You can pick either equation. It'll work in both as you figure it out. You're doing the algebra. 4x equals 32. Hey, check that out. x equals 8. 
See, I skipped some steps in there, but add 24, add 24, divide by 4, we get x equals 8. So the answer to this problem is going to be 8, 8. Voila, that was simple. Let's check out number 5. Number 5 is really tricky because the x's and the y's don't cancel, and I can't multiply the 6 by anything to get a 9, not a whole number at least, and I can't multiply the y by anything to get uh, the 2y to get a 13. Um, and again, you can use decimals if you want, but that's going to be really ugly. So let's see how we're going to do this one. I'm going to look at both of these variables, and I try to find a multiple that would be in common with either the 9 and the 6 or the 2 and the 3. In other words, like what do I have to multiply by to get a result that is the same for both of these? So I'm going to look at the x's because I think I can turn both of these x's into what? Is there a common number we can turn both of those into? 18. That's correct. If I multiply the top equation by 2, let's do that, times 2, what will that give us? And then the bottom equation times, well, I don't want to do 3 because that'd give me another positive 18, so I'll do negative 3. All right, so let's see the new equations that we get if we do that. The first equation, if I multiply the whole thing by 2, I get 18x plus 4y equals 39 times 2, 78. And then the bottom equation times negative 3, I get negative 18x. And then negative 3 times 13 would be negative 39. And then negative 3 times negative 9 is a positive 27. Now look at these two equations. Guess what I can get to cancel out? These 18s now. That's a positive 18. That's a negative 18. They cancel out. We have positive 4y minus 39, that's going to give us a negative 35y equals, and when you add these two together, they're both positive, so you get 105, divide by negative 35 each side, and we get y equals negative 3. Voila, that's pretty. So now we're going to go back to one of the first equations, either one. So I'm going to pick the bottom. Well, I'll go with the top one. Top one is 9x plus 2y equals 39. Again, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Any, meeny, miny, mo it if you're not sure. We're going to plug in a negative 3 for y. So that's going to go right here where the y is. So 9x plus 2 times negative 3 has to equal 39. All right, so what do we get here? 9x minus 6 equals 39. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Uh, let's see, add 6 to both sides. So we get 9x equals 45. Divide by 9. Yeah, 9. You get x equals 5. So answer to this one, 5, negative 3. And what makes this problem a little bit different than the others is you have to multiply both equations. Uh, by some coefficient. Now, if you get stuck and you're like, how am I supposed to know what to multiply by? Miss Kelly, I don't know what to multiply by. Okay, well look, you could always just multiply, see the first coefficients here, we'll look at the x's. You have 9x and 6x. Multiply the top equation by 6, the bottom equation by negative 9, that'll get you 54s, but do you really want to work with 54s? I don't think so. That's, uh, that's much too, uh, that, those are Big old numbers. So yeah, here we're going to use, we uh, turn them into 18s and everything cancels out nicely. There's no real rule, right way to do this. You just got to find numbers that work so they cancel out. All right, let's end with an application problem. Those are so fun. All right, so this one's about, go ahead and read it. Pause it, read it. Okay, so you've read it. And you look and uh, basically you're making pies and applesauce. And this is how many of each um, apple you need to do that. So, uh, we need five Granny Smiths to make a pie, and we need four Granny Smiths to make sauce. The total is 169. Can you kind of see where I'm going here? Like five times the number of pies. Okay, if I need to make two pies, I'm going to need 10. Three pies, 15. See how there's like an X there? So let's do this. Five Granny Smiths for every pie plus four Granny Smiths for every thing of applesauce, what a, what a batch, I guess they call it a batch, and the grand total, the number of apples, has to equal 169. Pause the video, write the other equation. All right, so you're back. Hopefully you paused the video and you did it. The other equation should be 3x plus 2y 
equals 95. Now, I'm not going to solve this for you because setting it up is the hardest part. You can solve it, but that's how you set up that type of problem, and uh, hopefully you'll have no problems. Hey, let's end with a little white and brust. I mean, nerdy. Sorry. Why do I keep... All right, man, we'll talk to you later. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See ya!